No one else is suggesting that we cut our land use by 96% to end the mass extinction. Up until now, the most extreme number was 50%, the topic of ecologist Edward O. Wilson's 2016 book Half Earth, and most reviewers dismissed even that as unrealistic. But some amazing things happened when we asked how we could reduce human land use by 96% and not only survive, but actually thrive. Asking the question this way reframes the whole problem of sustainability. Instead of treating it as a political mandate subject to public opinion, let's explore sustainability as a design problem with clearly defined constraints. Healthy politics involves compromise. We give up some of what we have to get some of what we want. That's why people fear that political solutions to sustainability would involve inconvenience and austerity and maybe still not solve the problem. Healthy design, on the other hand, is the opposite of compromise. The whole point of design is to get more of what we have and more of what we want. In other words, design can reconcile false dichotomies. For example, in the United States, most towns have at least one fatal intersection. A four-way traffic stop is inherently slow and unsafe. You have to watch for traffic going in seven different directions. Traffic lights are supposed to give you a little bit of safety, but they slow you down because you have to wait for the light even if there's no traffic. In heavy traffic, you may have to wait several light cycles to get through the intersection. That's a compromise. A little more safety means a lot less freedom. Dichotomy. But does this dichotomy have to be true? No. Let's redesign the four-way so you only have one direction to watch at any one time, and you don't even have to stop at all if there's no traffic. As a result of these two design decisions and a few others, the modern roundabout is up to 90% safer and 80% faster than a signaled intersection. More safety and more freedom. That's the power of design. Now, I know it's ironic that we're using automotive examples today because Edenicity designs are car-free. But since our entire 20th century legacy infrastructure was built around the car, here's another automotive example. Back in the 1970s, when it came to cars, you had fuel economy versus speed versus safety. Choose one. But when Tesla started selling the Model S in 2012, you had one vehicle with top ratings by a wide margin in performance, safety, and fuel economy. Choose all three. The design elements of the Model S, efficient electric motors, a heavy battery with a low center of gravity, and no large engine in the front crumple zone, all worked together in all three areas. Great design is the opposite of compromise. It creates new patterns that resolve false dichotomies. Design is the superpower that we will use to end the mass extinction, while vastly increasing economic prosperity for every person. Even if we didn't have to shrink our land use to survive, designing ecologically sound cities will create so much prosperity that we should do it now. You'll see why in the next video. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it.